Why is a nutritional approach alone simply not enough for most people? And what is the solution? What are we supposed to do if we're eating perfectly and we've got this great diet, but we're still not seeing results? We're going to talk about that today and more, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the Sarah Kleiner Wellness YouTube channel. My name is Sarah. I am a certified nutrition coach with the National Academy of Sports Medicine. I am also certified in quantum biology and circadian biology levels one and two with the Quantum Biology Collective. And I have just completed Dr. Tom Cowan's new biology clinic. I've also been working with people all over the world for the last 10 plus years in the scope of nutrition, mindset, and just overall health improvement and health optimization. So I have a lot of experience clinically, and I have a lot of knowledge that I have learned from continuing my education, lots and lots of self-study, lots more books that I can even name that I have read, and just studies, right? So going into PubMed, looking at what the scientific research says, and then seeing how this actually applies on a day-to-day -day basis with people in the everyday world and myself. So this is where all of this that I am talking about is coming from. I'm not just making it up and <laughs> making bold statements, but I got to a place with my own health where I was working very hard on my diet. I was getting all the exercise and the steps that I could possibly get. And I was expanding. My body was losing energy. And I was at the same time working with clients all over the world who are doing the same thing. And I'm like looking at their food, what they're eating. And I'm looking at what I'm eating and looking at my food. I'm like this, I don't know that this can get a lot better than this, right? And then seeing people do things like fasting and it causing more inflammation. And that is what made me start to look deeper at this. And at the same time, I was introduced to Dr. Jack Cruz and began to study leptin, quantum biology, and circadian biology, and kind of put all these pieces together and look at how people were responding as, as well as myself when we understood that the body's energy management system was dysfunctional. And it wasn't necessarily the fuel that was going in, but it was the engine of the body that was just really malfunctioning. And what most people never even mention in the nutrition world is what are the things that are causing the energy management system of the body to fail? And when you look at obesity, when you look at inflammation, it is a loss of energy. And if I'm just going to try to keep this talk about the mitochondria as simple as humanly possible. So most people are taught in school, the mitochondria is a powerhouse of the cell, gives ATP, energy to the body. What does this look like? So in the mitochondria, we have these five respiratory proteins. The fifth one is where we make the ATP. The fourth one is we, we make the deuterium depleted water. When electrons, so food is a form of an electron. We can also get electrons from grounding. We can also get electrons from sunlight, but most people never do either one of those. And so they're just heavily dependent on food. So that's one problem right there. You're only depending on food as your source of electrons. And when the mitochondria gets an electron, its job, and this is very, very, very simplified. If you want something more advanced, you can take some of my more advanced courses, but let's just keep it simple here for YouTube. The electron has to travel across those five respiratory proteins. What happens when the space is wider and wider and wider because of aging? Uh, electrons get lost. Lost electron, reactive oxygen species, not always bad. There's a purpose for them. But just for the purpose of this conversation, lost electron uh, is inflammation. And this is how the body is getting more and more inflamed is that the mitochondria is not processing the energy that you're putting into it. Now, things like a ketogenic diet have been shown to increase mitochondrial function and to improve mitochondrial health. So what we eat absolutely matters. You can't just eat pop tarts and Pringles and do this like calories in calories out thing is going to decrease your mitochondrial function is a form it's high deuterium. So deuterium is another thing that slows down this flow of electrons across that electron transport chain in the, in the mitochondria. And so we have to look at this. If the mitochondria are malfunctioning, if the energy management system of your body is crap, you could give yourself 
really, really excellent nutrition and it will be helpful, but it's only going to get you so far until you fix this, right? Until we can move these proteins closer together. We can support healthy mitochondria. We can support things like autophagy and apoptosis. So we do that mainly through allowing our body to make the master antioxidant melatonin. Melatonin we make in the pineal gland, that's 5% of our melatonin production in response to darkness at night. So this is why artificial light at night is so uh, deleterious for our health. It's really bad because we are stopping this process of autophagy and apoptosis and lots of other things like leptin docking to the brain. This happens at night, human growth hormone production. If you're having a lot of artificial light at night into your environment, if you're not getting proper sleep, then your mitochondrial function is going to continue to decline. We also make uh, melatonin subcellularly in response to near infrared light during the day. And so most people are near infrared light and red light deficient. They're not getting any red light, near infrared light from sunlight. Uh, a red light panel can be helpful in this. But ultimately, there are so many benefits just beyond the near infrared and the red light from the sun that our bodies can benefit from. And, but most people are have been taught to fear the sun, have told don't go in the sun. And so we're missing out on we should be getting 95% of our body's melatonin production should happen during the day in response to sunlight. Things like cold therapy can actually shrink the space between those respiratory proteins. Now, this is something you have to approach with nuance. You don't want to just do the more is better approach is not going to work. Um, you have to, again, approach things like cold therapy with nuance, which is why I have things which you can, you know, go and study and dive deeper into these topics. But why nutrition only approach doesn't work? Because the body sees the food as an electron, can't move it across that respiratory protein chain efficiently. Things like blue light, which I realize I am bathing myself in some blue light right now for the purpose of this video and non-native EMF, another thing that I've you know got around me to make this video. Uh, people are in these types of environments all day long. Again, this is causing that space between the respiratory proteins to grow. And so when you feed your body energy, it's like getting lost. It's not, it's not making it and your mitochondria are slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And so you're pushing harder with diet. You're pushing harder with things like exercise and you're not getting the results that you want. You're seeing inflammation, you're seeing obesity, you're seeing these things. And so this is why I am such a stickler for the circadian and quantum approach when it comes to healing the body because our body needs appropriate light signals, sunlight on the skin. We need grounding earthing. We need things like really, really strategic uh, cold therapy, again, depending on the hormonal situation of the person. And we also need to understand that the body, this is what I really learned a lot from Dr. Tom Cowan in his new biology clinic, the body is not out to get you. The body has all these mechanisms built in to help you and swelling and inflammation and these fluids rushing to different areas in the body is your body's attempt to heal. And it's a sign that something needs to be addressed not suppressed. And so when you begin to look at your body this way and understand your body this way, it makes a lot more sense. And it takes a lot of pressure off of people to be so dogmatic with nutrition and be so dogmatic with a lot of these things. And I have found for myself, I have not been this lean since high school. Uh, and I wasn't even really that lean in high school. <laughs> I think this is probably the, the most lean I've been in my entire life and been able to actually maintain it without a lot of restriction with just lifestyle that is supporting my mitochondria. So after I finish this video, I will go outside, I will ground, I will get under sunlight, I will stay away from blue light and non-native EMF the rest of the day after this little bit of time I spend here. And I know the repercussions of these things. The thing is that most people don't know. They're living behind glass indoors. Glass blocks the infrared and red light and a lot of the UV beneficial parts of the sunlight. Glass is blocking this. So you can crack a window to get those benefits. And they're not grounding. They're not touching the earth. They're never getting that flow of energy into their body that they could. So if you're someone who is stuck in this kind of nutrition only approach, 
and you're just not seeing the results that you want to see, I implore you to dig a little bit deeper into these things. Now I've got a bunch of free resources, free eBooks. If you're new here and just getting started, I also have courses. I have a course called the 21 day leptin reset course, which is a course that's going to give you nutrition and lifestyle protocols to handle this situation. And I have a brand new program called the Leptin Master Plan that is more for those who want to dive deeper into quantum biology and circadian biology and leptin for themselves and also to apply it with their clients and take it across multiple situations. So this is an approach and this is something I think that needs to be looked at on a deeper level. This is a very simplified version of all of this, but I hope it was helpful and useful to you. If it was, leave me a comment, like this video, and uh, yeah, hope to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.